Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade. Have a look at this brand new survival game that's incoming. It's going to be launching on Steam. It's going to be a co-op game, one to ten players, and it's a procedurally generated co-op adventure survival game. You are basically a 1930s explorer and you somehow end up in a tropical paradise island where you may have to face off against a whole plethora of unique oversized creatures as well as Neanderthals. Uh, I got pinged by an email on this. I do remember seeing this as part of some game reveals recently but the teaser reveal I gotta say didn't drag me in as much as this does and this is colorful, this is vibrant, it's being made using the Unreal Engine 5 and I feel like this game does look like it's got a lot of potential. So let's dive into what we know about Under a Rock. So I do remember seeing this reveal as like a PC gamer show or one of them things when I was looking out for all the other survival news that I normally cover on my other channel. And I just felt this was pretty cool though. And I've got to say, it just didn't really grab me that much. I thought it'd be like some kids game. It wasn't really revealing much other than a very comical looking dodo. And big ARK fans, I'm sure, might enjoy the look of this, but that's about it. It didn't really tell me anything about the game, what to expect. But now, now I'm getting a bit excited about the possibility of having maybe eggs and creatures and taming and all sorts, if indeed Under the Rock does have some of that stuff. So it's going to be a procedurally generated open world survival game for 1 to 10 players, and that's pretty big at the time. Valheim has really solidified that it's no longer okay to have 6, it's got to be 10. Wildlife is oversized, Neanderthals still exist, and curses are real. This game is developed by literally five people only, the Nordic Trolls, and I've already got a few little posts detailing what they're actually working on. So as I said, it's been made in Unreal Engine 5, and it does mean that they can maybe produce procedure-generated landscapes and stuff that look pretty good and are not as intensive. As this blog outlines, allowing an unprecedented level of detail for the building blocks, not to mention distance at which you can see your base. No more inside of the base showing before walls are rendered. No more not seeing parts of your base, even though you're only a short distance away. So this is cool, this is what a lot of brand new games will be tapping into, like Arc 2 in the future. Each construction piece is in the range of 300,000 to 1 million polys. The ropes have individual threads, not normal maps. So that allows a lot more detail. They go on to talk about the Lumin, which is also another part of the Unreal Engine 5, giving the game a nice, real good glow. You'll be able to build exceptionally large constructions with minimum to zero impact on performance. We know this because we've already tested it extensively. This screenshot is not of a massive construction. I thought they were going to show something big then, say yeah, but this screenshot is, but apparently not. Construction in Under Rock comes with a few rules, allowing for a wide range of creativity in building your dream home. In and underwater, up in the trees or high up in the mountains, your choice is simply about having fun. I love this, having proper ropeways, something Ark struggled to add in their games, and other games didn't really do it as well. I also go and talk about the Unreal Engine 5, how it's using different parts of 5S groom tech for doing hair, which is okay, yeah, yeah, character models are nice. What I like about this picture is something we're cooking, and we obviously got a lot of little decorative pieces. Whether it's just this little jar wall on a table, some barrels, a chair. These definitely look like sort of light glow lights or day glow lights. And then, yeah, the build pieces are nice. They've got this sort of castaway feel to them, with a mix of sort of bamboo and wood. Pretty much tiki beach hut vibes. To be able to place that and build your own constructions like this. Lots of decorative pieces now I'm looking back again as well. We've got like sofas and chairs here as well. Quite an ornate bed. Yeah, I'm feeling this. So no release dates or anything like that. They have said in their Discord they'll be approaching Alpha in the near future. Well, that would be the plan at least anyway. Then after that at some point they'll enter into early access. It's going to have single player. It is going to have obviously online co-op, LAN co-op. So I imagine that would be a pretty simple enough to set up dedicated servers full control of support and all the usual. And these are the things they want to add. Additional biomes, additional creatures, additional things to collect, craft, construct, boss fights. We'd also like to add taming, breeding and riding during early access. So that teaser definitely becomes a little bit more relevant, just like I thought. Lots of optimizations and enhancements of the dynamic AI. This list will be updated before we enter early access as much as we can change between now and then. So yeah, they are still a little bit away away from when this is actually going to happen with early access. But certainly it looks good. They have got a Discord set up. I'm in there now. If you do join, tell them that Jade sent you and you'll be able to find all of their posts and links that they've put out recently. 
Now they have got a few additional screenshots, mostly of the biomes, and these look cool. Again, just nice and tropical. Does look like there might be some sort of floating islands or very precariously balanced islands at least, and some sort of volcano as well, judging by the trailer. And then this, if this is what we're gonna be fighting against, giant creatures, massive crabs. I can only imagine something big and giant like a huge timber wolf or something, maybe even giant rats. It looks pretty good. We've got some sort of desert biome here as well. Deep woods, so not so jungly, a bit more sort of a Nordic, but it's still very lush and green. And then there's the nighttime shot with that volcano in the background. It'd be cool if that actually plays a part in the game. Remember, it's all procedurally generated as well. So all of these islands will be unique and different, I'm guessing, every time you play. So the composition of where your volcano may be, maybe there'll be realms or islands that don't have a volcano. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Little starfish there, looking conspicuously like the one out of Suicide Squad. And then just some more of the screenshots that we've already seen. So keep this on your radar. I certainly will be letting you guys know of any developments going forward for it. With Grounded approaching the end of its 1.0 release and no sign of small land yet, I've got plenty of room to cover brand new games up and coming. And yeah, I like the look at this one. I'm definitely feeling the vibe. The devs have worked on previous games before. I think mostly VR sort of stuff. So this looks like it's going to be the first game that isn't a VR title. And I'll be down for that as well as mostly VR games make me chunder. So yeah, you'll find the link to the Discord and the Steam page in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, I'll catch you at bags later.